Okay, let's say we have our raw data set up like this, and we have mass values written, and we have the max static friction with the three trials, the kinetic friction with the three trials, and you know you need to add three columns, one for normal force, average max, the average of these, and average kinetic, the average of these. First thing, mass needs to be in grams, like that. Now, if you don't have only numbers in these cells, in these cells, so for example, if you went and you put a G beside these, right, like that, or maybe you have a space G, then Excel won't be able to do any of the tricks I'm about to show you. So when you go to put your data into these cells here, make sure the unit is in parentheses at the top, like here, like here. See how you have Newtons in parentheses, Newtons. If you if you do it that way, you'll be fine, and then you just put in raw numbers with no units in these cells. If you have units in these cells, you're going to get into trouble, and Excel won't be able to calculate all the things that we want it to calculate. So take out all those units. Oh my gosh, look at this. Even if you just have a space... Oh no, it takes it away. Never mind. Uh, okay, so here are the values, right? The first thing I want to do is make it uh, clean it up a little bit, make it look a little nicer. So I'm going to hit Merge and Center, and then these two cells which I've selected previously. So I had two of these cells selected, I hit this, now they're one cell. And then if you do the center button here, and this center button, you can make sure they're in the middle. I want to center all of these as well. Let me merge and center these two cells. And now look at that. And I'm going to merge and center. Whoops, I did the wrong ones. See that? Instead I want to merge and center these three. There we go and I want to merge and center these three. Okay, the other thing you can do is you can highlight these cells and click wrap text. And now, if you do, uh, if you move this down and you move this in, the text moves onto a second line instead of just running into the next cell next to it. So I highlight all of these things and I center. Make sure you center, you have to hit it a couple times. And I actually want to merge and center these, and these, and these. Okay, now I want to add some borders, so I click here, I make this an outside border, and then I just click border, and then I hit the right key with my keyboard, border, then I move to the right, border, right, border, and that way it's really quick and easy to add all of the different borders you, you want. So border, over, border, over. And it's starting to look like a nice little chart here, a nice data table. Might as well add some borders around these, and then we are done after that, right? So I highlight, border, highlight, border. Okay, <clears throat> I'm not going to put borders around these yet. The normal force has to be calculated by Excel, so you put an equal sign so that Excel knows you want it to calculate something in the cell. So this should be equal to the mass value here, 208.4, except instead of typing in that mass, you just tell Excel you want the value in this cell here by clicking on it. And now, in place of B4, it actually uses the number in that B4 cell, which is 208.4 and we want to multiply that mass. Well, first we have to convert it into kilograms, so you divide by 1,000, divide by 10 to the 3, and then we multiply by 9.81, so that this is the weight. So for this mass, I put an, an equation in which calculates the weight, given the mass. And of course, the weight equals the normal force because our blocks were on horizontal, flat surfaces, and that means the normal force canceled the weight, and they were equal and opposite. So I hit enter, and then check this out. You click on the little black box right here in the corner. Let me zoom in. It's this little box right here in the corner of my highlighted cell, and you drag it down, and it does something neat. It calculates new values in the following cells and the subsequent cells. And if you click here, now it's using B5. So this gives you the normal force for that mass. And if you go down one, now it's using B6, which is this. So it refers to the, in each one of these equations, 
it refers to the cell, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the left. So as you copy it down, right, if I copy this down one more, I'll have 0 right here, because this number is 0. And look at that, there it is. Okay, I need to find the average max static friction force. So I'm just going to type in average, and then open parentheses, and highlight, click and drag these cells, which I want to average. And you're averaging the three max static friction values for this mass. And you close the parentheses and hit enter. And you drag this down, right? And then you need to find the average equals average for the three kinetic friction values. So you hit enter, you click the little magic black box here, you drag it down, and you fill. Now I'm going to add some column borders like that. These normal force values came from these values of mass. So I need to make sure these have the same number of sig figs as these. So these each have four sig figs and this has five. So these each need to have four. So let me take away some of those decimal places. Now each of those has four. And this needs to have five. So I take away some decimal places. And whoops, that's too many. Now it has five. Okay, what about these average values? Well, wait a second. Wait a second. This isn't point 0.9. I'm looking at my data table. It's point 0.900, zero zero, like that, right? Well, point 0.900, zero zero, every time I go to put, put in the extra zeros, Excel takes them away. That's really annoying. Zero, zero. The only way to add these zeros is with this formatting, uh, this formatting, uh, tab right here. So you got come over and we want to increase the number of zeros because my data table says 0 .900. Likewise, this should have another decimal place. And any others? Oh, here's one. So what I see is that these three values have three sig figs and maybe they have four in your data table. Maybe they're all like that. They all have four, so these, whoops, these both need to have four. And let me add another. Maybe this is what your data looks like. You've got an extra zero there. So if these have four, these max static friction, then the average, which came from these, this has to have four sig figs. So let me take away the others. These each have four sig figs. Likewise, for the rest of this column, right, all of these values have four. So all the averages, which come from here, they come from these numbers, these averages almost have four sig figs. So let me do that. Likewise, this has four. These each ha each of these has four. And so my average max must have four. Like that. These all have four sig figs. So these must all have four. Like that. Good. I want to center all of my data. Just make it look nice. There we are. Okay, and I'm finished now. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I like how that looks. I'm now finished with my data table. So I'm going to show you how you can add, uh, just copy this data table into Word. Um, it's really, really simple. You open your Word document, and we are going to make this one data table, and then this will be a second separate data table in Word. So you click you control C this to copy, so hit control C. Then you come over to Word and you just paste, control V. Or you can right click and paste. Now if your border doesn't come up, you can right click, hit borders and shading, and then click on right here to take away or add borders. So I want to add, I want all of the, this cell should have a border on all sides. So I add this one here by clicking. Okay, good. And then I'm going to add my other graph, my other chart, excuse me, my other data table. That's really a data table is what we call it. Add it below. And all the borders are there, so I'm good. Okay. Now we're going to have to make some graphs. We are going to insert scatter plots. So you click insert, uh, scatter, and you click this first option with none of the lines connecting. We don't want any connecting lines. Now, there's nothing in this scatter plot. Maybe I go to click the scatter plot, 
and maybe I have something selected, or maybe I do insert scatter, and it does this. It has all this mess. First thing you do is click on this this legend, hit delete. Right. Next, you are going to go up to. Uh, now you see how there's chart tools here. If you click off the graph, the chart tools disappear. So you have to click on the graph for the chart tools to be there. With chart tools appeared, I want you to click the design, then click select data. Right. And you see how there's all this stuff here already. Remove all of these one by one. Remove, 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 remove. Then we're going to add a new series. A series is just a set of x values and y values. So don't worry about the series name, that's nothing. The x values, well on the first chart, normal forces on the x-axis, highlight this, hit backspace, and put average max static friction on the y. Hit OK. Hit OK. Oh my gosh, this is too good. I've clearly cheated with my data, um, but that's OK. Your data won't look quite this good. It'll have some points that are up a little bit and off the line, you know, a little higher, a little lower from the line. Uh, the next thing we do, click on the chart, go to layout, add a chart title, and let's do above chart. Add axis titles, that's right here. And you can pause the video. I'm going to do a rotated title. You can pause the video and uh, fill this in. Whoops. You need to put in your axis titles. So this is normal force, right? Normal force, and the unit is newtons. I'm just going to, uh, oops, copy this and paste it in here. And then instead of normal force, now I'm going to change this to average max static friction force. I'm typing with one hand. And this is way too big. Oh, but it adjusted. But maybe you want to make it smaller. So you click on it, and then you go up here, home, and let's change it to 12 point font. And then you can move it around like this. Okay, you need to add a line of best fit. Oh, I need a chart title. So let me say, uh, I'll call this static friction. Maybe I just call this my static friction chart. You need to add a trend line, which is just a line of best fit. And hopefully it passes through all of the data points, or really close. To do this, you right click on a data point, hit add trend line, click linear, make sure that's selected, and then you click display equation on chart. There we go, there's my trend line equation. Cool. And it has the form y equals mx plus b. Right? Now, that's one of the two graphs I have to make. To make the second graph, check this trick out. I click the white space over here, and I drag. So I'm dr clicking and dragging. Then I press the control button on my keyboard. With control selected still, with that button pushed, I'm going to let go of the chart over here. And it makes a copy. So now I don't have to go through the rigmarole all over again. I don't have to go through the process of you know, adding a chart, selecting the data. Instead, I can just change this to kinetic friction. This is now going to be average kinetic friction. I'm still going to have normal force on the y, uh, the x-axis, but I need to change this so that we actually have the kinetic friction values selected. So right now, if you click on a data point, any one data point, hard to get. Let me try this one. There we go. You see how purple, the purple box is on normal force, and the blue box is on average max static friction. I want the blue box, which tells me the y values, I want it to be average max kinetic friction. So you scroll over the box until you see that four arrow icon. You click down, and then you can just drag. You can just drag this around and choose whatever values you want on the y-axis. If I want mass on the y-axis, I could do that, but that would be dumb. Instead, I'm going to do, not dumb, that would just be unuse, unhelpful for what we're doing here. So instead, what I've been instructed to do is make average max kinetic friction. Oh, no, that's not max. That's just average kinetic friction. There we go. That's better. <clears throat> and so just like that, by clicking a data point, I can drag this around. And my, so it was here. Now watch what happens to this line, and watch what happens to the axes when I move my blue box. They automatically update, which is really, really cool.
So it's super easy to make your second graph once you have the first produced. Okay. <coughs> so this has the equation. This equation has the form y equals mx plus b. So m, the slope, is 0.3514. The slope of this line is 0.4425, like that. b is the y-intercept. Hopefully that's 0. And like we discussed in class, the value of slope that you get is the coefficient of friction. So this slope, 0.4425, is mu sub s. This slope, 0.3514, is mu sub k, because this is the kinetic friction data. Good, OK. Now, you can copy these into Excel by clicking. You hit Control c or you can right-click and do Copy. Uh, or there's a Copy button up here. Then you click on Word, and you just paste it in, Control v Now, you can paste it like this. Or, when this thing pops up, click it, and then choose the first option to paste as a picture. It's a little bit easier. Uh, you won't have any problems. Your document will be, um, it won't slow your computer down if you paste it as a picture. If you paste it as an Excel object, then it's always, then this document is always talking to, whoops, is always talking to this document, and that can slow your, your computer down. Okay, so then I click here, I hit Control C or right click copy, go back to Word, enter enter, Control V, and there's my other graph. Good, and I want to paste this as a picture rather than link it to the Excel document. Okay, it's just a picture now, it's not talking to Excel. And you want to introduce each of these, give a brief introduction. I think some introductions are described for you, some examples of introductions. Make sure you have an MLA heading, and call this raw data, right? And then call this process data, and include some uh, introductions as well. These raw data, process data, these are just headers. And so the process data includes this, this table, this graph, and this graph. And that's how you produce graphs and tables in, Word, in Excel. That's how you make a trend line, how you add your chart title, your axis titles, make sure you have units in your axis title. And that's how you paste it into Word.